Um, oh, we've got this giant air compressor right here. And uh, like I was saying, not all facilities are the same. Uh, people, you know, have different accoutrements. And actually, Deerfield has a really nice setup. Um, it makes it really easy to work here because we've got this great air compressor and we've got these lines that run throughout the entire facility, all the way through the caves, everywhere on the crush pad, we've got these compressed air lines and we can plug in the air pumps to, to anywhere. And that's all they run off of. They just run off of compressed air, they don't use electricity um, or, any, or anything else to run. They don't, they don't use gas, just compressed air. So just that you're able to go anywhere in the winery and plug into this compressed airline. It just makes things really smooth and efficient. Um, we've also got our noble gases here. Um, we've got some nitrogen, uh, an argon. We also have some CO2. Uh, we use the CO2 to keep oxygen off of any fermenting wine. So. We're not gonna be using the CO2 that much during the off season, mostly during the harvest. Um, nitrogen and argon get used quite a bit throughout the year though, uh, because they're inert gases, they don't, con uh, they, don't, they don't alter the wine at all. So if ever we have a container of wine, like uh, maybe a keg of wine, we'll fill it the rest of the way up with nitrogen so as uh, to keep uh, oxygen away from the wine. Uh, argon is slightly more expensive than nitrogen, so we tend to use it less. Um, it's a little bit heavier though um, than the nitrogen is. What else we got? Another cool thing that we have is we have our very own forklift charger. We got an electric forklift and you can charge it right here. It usually charges overnight. Um, oh, our wall of tools. Kinda, yeah. So these are really, the tools we work with when we work with the grapes. So again, not so much using it right now. This will be used more during harvest. Um, as it turns out, uh, these like, like plastic things are just perfect for, uh, for working with grapes. They can be easily washed uh, and sterilized. They're pretty much indestructible. Uh, we've got these two awesome great pitchforks. And, um, just shovels for working with wine. We've got the white ones we use only for tanks. So we keep the white ones as clean as possible. And then the gray ones we use for the floor. So try and keep it a little more clean. I mean, we really, at all times, we try our best just to keep things as clean as possible. That's kind of, that's kind of our secret to making such good wine. Um, this guy, right here, is pretty much just a big strainer and we put this all the way in the grapes we got a ton of grapes smash that right in there and then we put the hose into it so we're able to uh, you know siphon out any juice or wine uh, without without sucking up all the berries and getting that all caught in the, in the air pumps we have to be pretty careful not to suck any solids through the pump because that will uh, we have, ah, the foot. This is a very important friend to the winemaker. As the grapes rise, red wine is fermented with the grape skins, if you didn't know that. And as the grape skins, um, as the wine ferments, the grape skins rise to the surface. And in order to get all the flavor out of those grape skins several times a day, there's really not many other ways. You just have to go and push, push it down. It's called the cap. And you have to resubmerge the cap in the wine. And to do that, you use one of these things called a foot. 
and that, that technique is called the punch down technique. And the only alternative that we use here is called a pump over, where we take wine from the bottom and we just pump it over the top. But um, using the foot is actually probably a better method. Uh, less, the, the, the wine isn't exposed to the turbulent, the turbulent pressure and you know, being pumped all the way up the top and it's not being exposed to as much oxygen. Um, also, you do this while it's fermenting, so you, know, you don't really want it to damage those little happy yeast colonies um, while they're fermenting. So this is a little bit more gentle approach. We've got this guy, and we've got this one too. I think uh, I think everyone's got their personal favorites. I like I like that one better. Um, we've also got here's a here's another one, but uh, we don't really ever use that one. Kind of in another foot. They kind of just come in different configurations. Um, you know, there's no like like right way they should be. The rivers they look very very different from each other. There's a wide selection of uh, different kinds of I guess feet available on the market. You know, like, like this guy. Like, what is what is what is this for? I don't know. It's kind of like some kind of Shaolin monk staff thing, but I mean, we use it just to move the, the grapes along the swing table whenever they get stuck or something. We try to be as gentle as possible. You know, we want to keep our grapes happy. Um, so I'll show you some of the uh, cleaning supplies that we use. We use the alcohol to sterilize small pieces of equipment, um, just pure grain alcohol. It's actually, well no, it's actually grappa made out of grapes. Um, we use o uh, ozone, O3, to clean large um, objects, but typically what we use to really sterilize and disinfect things thoroughly is a combination of two different things. It's peroxycarbonate and citric acid. And the peroxycarbonate is actually, um, it's just, uh, it's just, it's just ox oxyclean. It's pretty much the exact same thing that you're throwing in every load of laundry. It gets a, li a little bit soapy. Um, but it's really, uh, it's really good stuff. It's pretty eco-friendly. Um, then w what happens is you don't, you really don't want the peroxycarbonate to get in your wine. I mean, it's like getting soap in your wine. So to get the peroxycarbonate off of something after you've used it, you use citric acid to neutralize it. And the citric acid is just pure, pure citric acid crystals. I mean, it's Actually, uh, this is the same stuff that, you know, there's the little uh, white crystals that you find on your sour Skittles. Puckery. Uh, so we really end up having to wash everything three times. Wash it first with a proxy, call it proxy, then wash it again with the citric, and then finally rinse the citric off of the water because you don't want to get citric acid in the wine either, but it's actually, it's not too bad. And then this guy just happens to be sitting out. We, uh, we really don't use this very often at all. Um, you know, we produce, uh, if you've seen the bottle video, you've seen how we bottle. This is actually just a hand corker. Um, it's actually a pretty nice one. Uh, it has this little tube to put, you can at attach it to a nitrogen tank and uh, you can sparge it at the same time as corking it. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a very, very nice one. I mean, I've seen quite a few. They all look kind of different. Um, we, yeah, like I said, we don't really use this often in practice. Oh, that's pretty much uh, all the time we have for today. So I'll see you guys next week on Cellar TV.